Good evening, folks, and welcome back to the Talk of the Town podcast. We're back after an extended break due to the football return, but it's all over now, and I'm joined by Longford Town manager Dara Doyle, who I've no doubt is, is still riding a wave of emotions and, and happiness and joy and relief after such a, a whirlwind end to the season. Dara, how, how's things getting on since, since our, our massive victory last week? Yeah, listen, everything's going well. Obviously, it's, it's been a great, I suppose, seven days for the club since last weekend. Um, to get promoted in the way we did and with the performances that we put in in the playoffs was, was, was brilliant. It's been a busy week. Um, lots to sort, lots to arrange. And listen, that was always going to be the case if we achieved what we wanted to do. Uh, we have done that now with, with promoting for our club and really a lot to look forward to now. Uh, a lot of preparation and a lot of work to go into what's ahead of us now. But the, the overall feeling is, Listen, delighted that we were able to achieve promotion. Uh, delighted with the group of players and the staff and, and the supporters and the backing that we've had to help us uh, get to this goal. I'm going to take you all the way back to just over a year ago. Um, you're warming the team up along with Jer and, and Stephen and Albert and Willie before the Bowls game in Daily Mount. You've been in touch with Johnny Martin already. He, he couldn't get home. He was telling me to make it for the game. Did you picture yourself in the situation you're in now over a year ago or did you think, right, there's a bit of work to do before we get there? No, listen, I knew there was a bit of work to do. I knew it was a huge opportunity for me at the same time. Um, it was an opportunity I was, I was ready for. And then obviously when it came to the, to the stage of it being made a permanent appointment, so I, was, I felt it was ready and it was something I did honestly see myself doing and stepping into and I was delighted to do so. So... Listen, they're all plans you have as you, I suppose, finish your career and go through your, your coaching badges and uh, I suppose the experience you get with being a number two as such um, and prepares you, I suppose, for, for going in as a number one. And uh, I was delighted that I was able to, to carry on this job and, I mean, to look what we've achieved in our first full year of management and as a staff, it's together, it's, it's been great. So I'm really happy with it. If we look back on that night, you know, uh, when I look back at it myself, because uh, I was there, when I think about how the team played that night, considering everything that had gone on during the week and, and everything in the build-up to that cup game in particular, the, 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 the level of play or the, the type of play we had that night and the performance the lads put in, now obviously some of them players are gone and, and some of them are still here, but you know you were overseeing that team, you implemented what was to happen that night. I, I think you kind of set the tone for your managerial reign so far. I mean, the, the performance put in that night was absolutely brilliant. We, we could have beaten balls well that night. It just didn't work out you know, with, with penalties and everything else. If you look at that performance and then look at the last maybe month's performances, They've been very like they've nearly mirrored each other in terms of effort and dedication from the players. I think, and, and the players need to take a huge amount of credit for that because they are the ones that go out onto that pitch and put your plans and your preparations into action. I suppose so. They, they've got to take a huge amount of of for that. Um, you the performance again, so see that night in Bowes. You mentioned we could have won. I think missing a penalty in in normal time and. How it went on, it was, yeah, it, was, it was an excellent performance from the lads and I couldn't have asked for more from them on that night. Um, there's a lot of them players obviously still with us and, and carried through to this season and I think the hurt of how we lost in the playoff last year on penalties to Cavan stood to a lot of them when it came to playoff uh, situation again this year. So um, listen, the, the lads, I, I can't ask for more than them. That's one thing that they've always given me is, is the full effort and backing and um, I think that's huge when you go into any club as a manager that you get the backing and support of the players and the people around you. As a former player of the club, you know what it's like, you know, to be involved with Longford Town on a personal level, and and you know you had the dedication to the club and the passion for the club, the same as Johnny Martin, you know, and I myself from being around the club for years and and being a former player as well. You know, the supporters want players that, that are passionate about our team and, and they want players that come in and want to wear the jersey of pride. For a few years, I felt that before yourselves, obviously, there was a, a certain type of player that would come to the club and use it more as like, you know, a stepping stone to something bigger, as they would say. Whereas I feel that our club should be one of the club's premier players are looking to and saying to themselves, yeah, I want to go sign for Longford Town. They've a top class stadium. They've great management in place. They've great facilities. And I think we're kind of at that stage now where players are thinking to themselves, no, I want to sign a few years here with this club. I don't want to just, you know, go there for a year, see what happens and move on. It's become a club now where players want to see out their careers. I mean, Carl Chambers is with us six years, I think, next year now. So that just goes to show that if, you're, if you put the commitment in, 
the club will reward you and you'll be there for a long time. Yeah, listen, it's it's a fantastic club. It, it really is. It, like myself and John have been there, and um, I, I was there with the disappointment in two thousand and seven when we were relegated, not through matters on the pitch, but for a couple of issues off the pitch. That in subsequent years there was far worse happened, and, and nothing happened to any of the clubs after um, how they punished their club, and and that was a really sad thing to happen to us at that stage because it was a squad that didn't really deserve that. It was a year I think that we got to the cup final as well, and. It was just such a shame to be penalised in such a way by the FAI that, 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 that we did end up as a club being relegated. Um, so th that was very disappointing. You, you mentioned the club and, and all the pluses and you mentioned all the things that players look to when they're joining a club. And we tick, like you said, almost every single box there from our facilities to our staff to our current players to the style that we have. And, and we really are, I feel, a club that players want to play for. Now, obviously, we're going to have to recruit certain players in the coming season. And listen, the really important thing is keeping all our current players who it's meant so much to to get to this stage and who put in the effort. And listen, it's it's down to their performances on the pitch that this season that we've we've achieved what we have. So we know we want to keep a certain number of them players, but we also feel now we're in a position where players will want to come and play for Longford Town. And um, you mentioned other certain type of players that came to the club previously. There will be certain types that we will be approaching to to come to the club, and there'll be a lot of boxes they have to tick for us to take them on to play for our club. And um, listen, it's a really exciting time for our club because we're now at the premier level of football in the country, competing against the best teams in the country, and um, we need to be in a position where we get ourselves set up right and give ourselves the best chance to compete as well as we can. If you look at the past year, you know, it's, it's been an absolutely crazy year on and off the pitch. And for a manager in his first year, you know, you're having to deal with COVID and, and two pre-seasons and, and all the stuff that came with that, you know, not seeing your players for a month or two on end and trying to do training sessions over Zoom calls. You know, it's been one of the most unique years in anyone's life. You know, people will remember 2020 for, for, for generations, but... How has it affected you? You know, we, we come into pre-season in January. We, we have a good, solid pre-season. We, we open our, our campaign with two league wins, a home and away win against uh, Rovers and Drotted, and then bang, everything's done. Yeah, and, and listen, it was, of course, it's really difficult, but it was the same for everyone in the country, every team in the country, and we all had to prepare for it in different ways. I think the biggest struggle for, for a lot of people was, was, was mentally during the lockdown period because it was really difficult life as we knew it absolutely changed um for, for the lads we have where i know a couple of the lads have jobs and college and bits but i mean football means so much and but that's i suppose to be taken and not being able to do it for such a period of time it was difficult to know exactly how to live and react because nothing like this has ever happened before uh, the challenges that faced us were huge i suppose and uh, we did keep the lads busy with, with phone calls, with Zoom sessions, do, doing as much as we could in that time off to have ourselves in the best possible way we felt we could to come back whenever we did come back. And I know it kept getting pushed from what was initially a two week to then four week to then another four weeks. And then I think it was another couple of weeks even after that before we did come back. But we were delighted that we were able to come back. There's so many other people that have, have been affected in the country, I suppose, this year. And we were one of the lucky few that were able to come back train, play our football and prepare for the restart of the season. And yeah, we, we had a second pre-season and uh, we had to put in as much work as we could into a four-week period before we started back, uh, I think it was the end of July, beginning of August. And um, it, it was then a case where we came back and I, I think we played was it nine games in the first five weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it was a really busy schedule that, that we had coming back. So it was, it was high demands on the players, on staff and on everybody, I suppose. Um, the sad thing when we returned was, was, I suppose, the lack of crowds and people there to support us. And isn't it huge to have your supporters backing you and behind you? <coughs> and as the season goes on, but um, <coughs> yeah, we, 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 we dealt with it as best we could. We were delighted to get back playing football. There was some inconsistencies in some of our performances in the league, which, which stopped us from challenging at the top end of the table, which was disappointing. But I think if you look overall at possibly every club in the country, there, there was inconsistency. I think the sound went there. 
Yes, yeah, the joke. Known there for. So, listen, we, we were delighted with, with getting back and achieving what we've achieved because that was our goal and our aim. Our aim was to go and win the league. The next big thing after that was to achieve promotion through the playoffs. And listen, we've achieved it, and possibly in the manner that we did achieve it with our victories in the playoffs, it, it probably made it all the sweeter. We probably knew we were out of the title race, I think, against Cove after the defeat at home. But when when did you and Johnny say to yourself, right, look, we have a playoff now. This is what needs to happen. Because I know during the week in a few of the interviews, you were saying he's kind of hit the reset button for, for the, the last few games. But when did it when did it just when did it, when did you say to yourself, right, things need to change now, we need to knuckle down, we're gonna go, we're gonna get promoted, this is what we're gonna do. Yeah, I, I, I missed the majority of that question, unfortunately, with a bit of, bit of you froze on me there for a minute, so I only got the, the last part of the chance. I was saying, we probably knew we were out of title race after the defeat to Cove at home. And <laughs> when did you and Johnny say to yourself, right, we have the playoff spot, we need to kind of knuckle down now and, and get this right, we're going to get promoted, we're going to have to do it the hard way, this is what's going to happen, because I know during the week, as I've said in a few interviews, you know, we had to hit the reset button essentially for the playoffs. Yeah, listen, it was the case when we lost to the Cove game, I think the Galway one was a big one, obviously, when, where we lost at home and had we continued our performance, which it looked so good for, for most of the first half, I think we could have given ourselves a real chance of then kicking on and being one of the clubs at the top end. Um, I think the defeat with the Cove at home sort of seals that, listen, we're not going to challenge at the top end and we do need to make sure that, that we that we finish in the playoffs. So it was one of those, listen, we, we finished fourth in the league this year because we obviously finished, deserve to finish fourth. You always end up in the league table where you, where you deserve to. Uh, we finished in fourth, it brought us into a, a playoff situation where we knew we were playing against UCD. Uh, we knew who the second and fifth would be, and we knew how our preparation would need to be to get ourselves ready. The great thing with the playoffs was, in previous years, I think with, with, with double legs, it's been Friday and Tuesday or whatever it has, where it being a one-off game, and they, there being a week between each games, it gave us time to put in huge preparation and, and um, get ourselves ready for those games, and we made the most of the time we were given to put in as much as we could for that period to achieve what we wanted to do. We knew it would take... Um, sacrifice from the lads we knew it takes them to, to switch on and be ready but that's something they thrived on and that they loved and um I, I don't think we could have went into any of those playoff games any better prepared um the sort of scenarios and situations and games that we'd be expected to happen against in each game i thought we dealt with superbly due to our present to our um, preparation and and the performance of the lads was like you said it was outstanding in them games and totally deserved to, to do what we achieved with through our performances I was very impressed at the the level of maturity the team showed in the playoffs. You know, there was from 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 my perspective, there was no hint of nervousness or, or you know living to the occasion kind of. I suppose did, did yourself and Dara haven't played in big games, and even Dean Zambra, I suppose as well. Did you just kind of pass on a bit of experience, as in like you know keep the cool heads, you know just take it one minute at a time in each game. Yeah, no, we did. Listen, we, we do have people involved with huge experience in playoffs. I mean, I've probably got as much experience in playoff games over the last 10 years as, as anyone in the country as a player. And, and then obviously last year as part of the coaching staff and then coming into this year. So they are crazy things. Crazy things can happen at these games. And I mean, you're, you're looking out for it in our first game against UCD where although we were very deserving of at least it being level at 90 minutes, it wasn't until the 90th minute that we equalised and um, to bring the game to extra time. So the one thing we did is we kept going and we kept doing the things we asked the lads to do. And listen, you get your rewards for, for doing that. And, and we did that. Um, the lads showed, like you said, huge levels of maturity with their performances and I think with their game management. I think our game management was key in a lot of those games. We, we'd gone behind against UCD and we kept doing the right things and the things that we asked the lads. In the Galway game where we went ahead, we kept in on the things that were asked of, of the lads and, and, and I can see, I think, don't think Galway really, really laid a glove on us on the day. I think the lads played out the game really well, although it was disappointing to see the late goal in the game. It, it wasn't a game that I felt under any pressure. Um, I, I, I felt comfortable even with us being down in the last few minutes with how well the lads had been defending and performing. So it was all huge pluses and positives going into the Shelburne game. 
And we knew we went into it obviously with the momentum. They were obviously the, the premier team with, I suppose people would say the higher caliber of players, the bigger budget have played at a much higher level than us all year round. But um, I think you see in the performance of our players that they stood up to it and, and listen, I thought we were really good and I, and I thought we were the best team even before they went down to 11 men. Um, and I think anyone watching that game will, 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 will agree with me on that. I think we were totally deserving of our victory and promotion on the day. Waking up the morning of the Shells game, you know, it's a different scenario when you're a manager. And I'm sure Johnny will agree as assistant manager. But was there any any nerves there on your part? Did you wake up and get a feeling in your stomach like, oh, what's going to happen? No, I, I, I honestly was was really excited. And I was, I think, straight after the UC game, UCD game, I couldn't wait for the Galway game. And after the Galway game, I just was, I, the only hard part was waiting to find out we were who we were going to play on the Monday night. It turned out that obviously Shells dropped into it on the last game of the season and I couldn't wait to play the game. And I, I felt like that all week. I said it to the lads. We, we felt prepared. We felt ready. And I just couldn't wait for, for the game to, to start, basically. And um, once it did, the, the lads backed up and all the belief that I had in them, I think you could see it out there on the pitch. The final whistle went in Tolka and I actually had a camera placed um, in your dugout. I don't know if you've seen it yet or not, but I'll be uploading a clip later of, of the final whistle and that camera angle. But you immediately turned to Albert, who's behind you, and you know, give him a big hug. And, and you and uh, but I can see in the background Johnny comes out and he stands up and he turns around and he just bends over the wall like this. He, he looks like he's been winded or something. What, what did you say to him when you ran over to him? I, I honestly, I, I, I can't overly remember. I remember obviously when the whistle blew and. I think Albert was the nearest man to me at, at the mm. time and, and he had a big hug and I got mine, I suppose. And um, as I told you, right, I did see John, <laughs> um, John with the hands over the side of the dugout and down. And listen, they can be emotional moments and he's, he's not probably wanting to show a lot of emotion all the time. But I mean, it was a special moment and, and a great achievement. So I, I don't even know if we did say much and I honestly can't remember. I just think we, I think we had a hug, did we? You'll probably tell me if you put put something there. And um, listen, it, it made all the work and effort you put in. Moments like that really do make it worth it. I, I did see a little clip of um, the celebration from your um, camera posted there. I think it may have been yesterday or the day before with <laughs> um, our celebrations after the first goal. So that's the first time that I was probably aware that there was that there was a camera <laughs> on us. <laughs> but. Um, no, it was just a great feeling when the whistle went and, and we knew we've achieved promotion with our club and it was huge for us. So, yeah, listen, your emotions flow, you enjoy the celebrations and um, you try to take in as much of it as you can because, listen, there's lots of highs in football, but it's also a lot, a lot of lows and we really had to enjoy this moment, but now make sure that we take advantage of the moment to... I suppose, put in everything we have again to prepare, to give ourselves the best possible chance of, of kicking on and ensuring that we stay a Premier Club because it's, that's going to be a big goal. And listen, there's going to be lots of work and lots of investment in our club needed to ensure that we can do that. Yeah, as you said, in 2007, the club got relegated. You were a part of that playing squad at the time. So I suppose, in a way, you've come full circle now. You've got the club back promoted. Now, obviously, we were promoted in the meantime between then. But um, and it took it took us five years. No disrespect to Tony Cousins, it's only after taking you one. And um, what? Why is it? As Johnny said, why is it better as a manager than as a player getting promoted? In, in your opinion, it it just I don't. It isn't, it's hard to put a put a finger exactly on on what it is. But I mean, it 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 does sort of take over your life. To be fair, there's there's so much investment goes into it and. I, I think you have to give it everything you have because it would be unfair on the players if you didn't. And and it's so important and it is so important to me, football and, and making sure we achieve things and that we we improve and that we can challenge. And we're now in a position where, where we're going to be able to do that. But it, it does mean so much. And I think, listen, the players likewise, they give up and sacrifice so much for the, the commitment to our club. And I do the same with my family, but no more so than and I suppose some other people and what I ask of other people. But I mean, it's a great feeling, I suppose, as a manager, because you're the one overseeing it and leading it. And the players will follow the example, I suppose, that, that you set. And 
their players will always end up being a well they should do be and be a, I suppose a mirror image or I suppose or a reflection of their manager and their leaders in the group and um I feel we've got a lot of really good people in our group I feel we've got a lot of great players in our group and um a, a lot of people that if you really need them they'll be there for you and I, I think that shows in our group Looking ahead to 2021, we still don't know what way the season's going to be. We would hope for a full season this year now, with, with, even with COVID in place, because you know the FEI, in fairness, and the league have shown that League of Ireland matches can go ahead and strict procedures are followed and everything works out fine. Um, so ho- hopefully we'll know soon enough what way the season will be. But obviously, as you said, the, the hard work has started. It's already started for you. Um, what 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 why do you see you setting the team this year? Will you will you recruit largely, or you want to keep the core of the squad? Yeah, we'd we'd like to keep a, a core of the squad. Um, I think it's usually important that we do that. Uh, we know we'll obviously need to recruit players in, in positions in in our team and in our squad. So that's something that's already started. There's already been um, work gone into identify who we need to target and. Listen, we, we, we'll crack on and get to work with that as, as quickly as we can because it's going to be really important that we get the right players in with the existing group to ensure that we have a strong group there that all want to achieve the same thing, that we'll all back each other up and that we'll all play and fight for each other and the club. And it's going to be a hugely important time for us as, as we prepare for the coming season, but usually exciting times to test ourselves against the best that the country has to offer. and be great to bring all these teams back to air ground and, and, and be able to put in performances that that will be able to result in us getting results from these games and we're, we're really looking forward to it. We can't wait till we're able to be in a place where it can happen. What happens with the season as regards its planning and if it's going to be back to it being a full season, which we hope it will be. Um, we'd hope the FEI would be able to make some announcements on some stuff as soon as possible. I know the fixtures for the Premier, they, they tend to come out, I think, is it a week or two before Christmas? Mm. So we, we will wait and see if that is the case. Uh, as regards the supporters getting back in, I'm, I'm led to believe that um, they, they put in the request that it be a minimum of 30% of the attendance, mm. of, sorry, of capacity. So, I mean, if, if you were able to get 30% of our capacity, we're, we're probably up near, what is it, 5,000 capacity now? We're just over 5,000 now, yeah. Or five but with the act with the work that was done, I suppose, there the, during the off season. So, if you're looking at nearly a third of that, you're, you're still looking at possibly 1500 people being allowed into games if it's managed well. And I think if, if we're in a case where we can get 1500 people into our games, there'll be a lot of really happy people in Longford that can get in and support us in Premier Football. And um, we all want that because football without supporters and without people there, it, it isn't the same. It really isn't. And the sooner we can get back to normality, not just in football, but I suppose in our in our everyday lives, the better. Having no crowds, I think, affected a lot of teams in the league and um, performance wise. Some teams performed very well without crowds, some people performed terribly without crowds. It, it was a bit of a mixed bag, I think, with us. You know, we had great performances with crowds there and great performances without crowds there. Does it make a massive difference, do you think, as a player? Or do you think, you know, they just drown it out, they get on with things? I, I personally feel, from playing years ago, that with a crowd, a little bit of a crowd there, kind of spurred you on, it kind of got you going, whereas other players might, you know, feel a bit of pressure. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that the crowds and support there, they, they give you that added buzz, they give you that, I suppose, they, they add to the atmosphere in the theatre of football. And, you know, football is a... It's, I suppose it's an entertainment sport. Let, let's be honest, it is, and it, it needs people there doing it. And I think the players and people involved in the game thrive off that support and the noise and the encouragement and sometimes in the stick that you get. And it's it's all part and parcel of football. And for it to be taken away the way it was, it, it was difficult and, and people did react to it differently. But listen, we, we really want our crowds back at the game supporting us because there's lots of brilliant people in Longford. And they want what's best for their club and we know that they'll support us. So for us, the sooner we can get people back supporting us and behind us, the better. So I really hope that it's something that the FAI will take on board when they're coming to make a decision. Because I think with Browns having it even at a 30% capacity, possibly even more, hopefully if things improve, you see how well managed football was in the League of Ireland and how well COVID was managed through 
uh, protocols and guidelines that were followed. I, I don't think there's any other sport in the country that followed it as closely or as strictly as uh, the football clubs in the League of Ireland. And, and that's a credit to every single club and to the work that was put in at, at our own club by Ash and by Willie, our COVID officers. So, you know, they've got to take a lot of credit for the work that they've done this year through testing times. And um, listen, they made everything easier for us as a staff and us as the players to, to do what we had to do in, in these strange times. Just going back to the win over Shells, you and Johnny um, is, is went a bit viral with your RTE clip about getting home on the Monday after, when in, re in reality, the both of you were home fairly early that night and, and were sitting down relaxing. But later that night, about nine o'clock, a cavalcade of hundreds of cars flew down the main street in Longford, beeping their horns and waving the red and black flag. Uh, I'm sure you've seen clips of it. What was that like for you sitting at home? It was probably a strange feeling thinking, oh, Jesus, that's brilliant. But at the same time, isn't it a pity we're not there to parade? Yeah, listen, we, we wish we were there because in, in normal circumstances, doing what we've done, we would have been straight back to Longford. As soon as that game was, was over, we would have been back. And, and, and it's very unfortunate that, that, I suppose, as a club, we weren't able to to mark the occasion totally as a group. Um, you, you're waiting after the game and the stadium clears out. And I think I said to John, you look around and there's people gone and the city's closed and there's nothing you can do. And in normal circumstances, it, it's a huge celebration for what we had achieved. And like you say, you're at home. And I, I at the time, didn't know that it, that it had even happened until the next day because I got home at... Um, I think about half six and on my phone was just absolutely popping. Like it, it didn't stop. And I put it away actually because I, I just wanted to relax and enjoy the moment and take in what, what we've done. And I did that for the evening and I didn't turn my phone on until the next day, probably at lunchtime at 12 or one o'clock the next day. And it wasn't until the next day that I'd, that I'd seen the, the uh, parade that happened in the town with the cars. And listen, it was brilliant to see. It really was. And, um, it was great that it was be able to be marked and, and I think the players had seen that themselves and it, it was just a sense, I suppose, of how much it meant to people there um, how much we probably would have, it showed how much we would have loved to get up and with protocols and guidelines and, and things you have to follow with the, with the government regulations, it was, it was so unfortunate that we weren't able to get up there and, and share the moment with, with our town and with the supporters. So, we're really sorry and sad that we weren't able to do that. And all we can do is just wait until, I suppose, the regulations from the government possibly change to allow us to get up. But we, we'd love nothing more than to get back up to, to Longford. If we can get up in December, depending on what happens with government guidelines, that's something that we'll definitely do because I, I think the achievement of our club deserves to be marked and it, it deserves something for us to, to do. What that will be, I suppose time will tell and that will be dictated to us by government. But it was brilliant to see all the videos, all the pictures of it um, over the week. And uh, I was delighted that we as a club were able to do something in the town. And, and, and it, listen, it was, it was brilliant and really sorry and unfortunate that we couldn't be there. It kind of had, you know, memories of of the past and the glory days. And you know, Longford is, is a very successful club in, in their own right with, with their past wins and cup wins and, and league finishes and promotion like that. You know, it took us five years the last time to to kind of create something and, and get promoted. Now we won the league that time, and and obviously it's great to win the league. But I think the way we got promoted this season was was far better than than a league win could be you know you could win the league and maybe be seven or eight points clear and, and grand perfect no one to complain about that but in terms of you know create an atmosphere even without supporters there they'd be watching at home create an atmosphere uh you know keep, keeping a bit of hope going in in a horrible time that we're living in and and kind of dragging the season on week after week we're true to the next one we're true to the next one and then finally we're in the final we go one nil up. I'm sure that the sitting rooms in Longford and all across Ireland and, and the world, whoever was supporting us, were just literally losing their mind. Yeah, no, that they were. And I, I've seen some of the videos of them. I've, I've um, heard the stories of what people were doing. I've had messages from, I, I don't know how many people telling me how much it meant to them. And that that's from our supporters and people of the town. But you've, you've also got to take into account then that the families of all the staff and all the players and um, friends of all the everyone involved that 
they were hugely behind us. And, and I don't know, man, like I have family all over the country with my parents being from Cavan and Carlo. And um, I, I now think we have a, a Longford Supporters Club in Carlo. We have one up in Cavan. Um, because the, the amount of messages I've got of people huddled around laptops, had it um, streamed onto the TV from people all over the country. Um, and it, it was just brilliant to, to see the support that was there for us and, and the people that really want us to do well because obviously everyone knows your supporters are going to want the best for your club, but it, but it means a lot. And I don't think you take anything more than, than, than seeing your family and your friends and I suppose your loved ones being happy that you've achieved something. And it makes it, it probably makes it better because that, that's the best feeling for you, that true football and your achievements in football, it, it makes people happy. And that's something that we've managed to do through football and I'm delighted with that. I've seen you have a, had a, a word or two with, with Jim, our chairman, after the game against Shells. Can you can you reveal what he said to you, or, or was it was it more like you know you should have done this sooner? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he would have liked us to do it sooner. But now, listen, it was just um, more or less a congratulations, well done. That it was great and and well deserved along along those type of lines. And we probably didn't get too much time because. I suppose the amount of uh, media work that had to be done after the game and it, it, it was tough to have a, a proper conversation with anyone when your emotions are still flying and it's it's, it's just happened so um, yeah listen it was great to, to see everyone there and everyone and how happy they were with, with what happened so yeah it was just nice I suppose for everyone to be there but it wasn't a case of us you know us being able to, to talk on any any details as such but um, they, they'll happen over the, this week and the coming week and We'll be hoping we can get our club prepared to to, to give the best shot we can, and, and and that's something to look forward to. I don't like to point out on any player, especially after winning promotion. But a Dervin, you would say he's our, our local poster boy for the club. You know, we plaster his face everywhere on posters and, and graphics and everything. But as as a former player of the club, you know what it meant to him to win promotion with, with his boyhood club. I mean, there's a great photograph of the two of his when he's a ball boy. I think he's only seven or eight years old. Uh, and now there was another photo of the two of you celebrating promotion. Like, how do you feel about, about stuff like that? Like, like, he grew up with this club and, and he's after winning promotion with it now. Yeah, listen, it, it, it's brilliant. And, and you mentioned A and his performances. And listen, let's, let's particularly in the playoffs where... I think in each game, he was excellent. And you, you see how much it means to him because he has that connection with the club from, I suppose, from being a small boy growing up in Longford, going in and, and watching what, what A will describe as a lot of his heroes that played for Longford Town. He came up through the ranks and there's nothing A wanted more than to emulate what he's seen growing up because he's seen the club being successful. He's seen them achieving Europe. He's seen them winning cups. He's seen them competing at the top end of, of the Premier uh, table. So for A to be able to be part of a group that goes on to achieve promotion to the Premier where a lot of people would see us being as more than capable of, of, of staying and competing at that standard. It's brilliant for A and, and you can see how much it meant to him. And listen, it's great that we have A living in Longford, Longford born and bred supporter since he was young achieving I suppose a, a dream of his and, and and it really is and I know we might sound the sound of it corny to people but, but that's the exact feeling of what happened with A this season and what he's achieved and he's played a huge part in it and we, we look forward to him playing an even bigger part in our season come next year We're probably only I think if we pre-season starts in January so a month and a half away from pre-season you're probably egging to get going, you know, get back on a pitch. Now I'm sure you, you you're grand, you're, you're doing your work with, with your kids and your academy and everything else during the week and at the weekends. But obviously, it's a bit different for for your your first team management. You're just trying to get back on the pitch and get the football going again. Yeah, no, listen, we are, and it's, it's something we did last year as well. We we'll, we're actually in on Wednesday um, this week. We we'll, we'll probably have it. It'll just be a light session and. We'll probably make it a bit of fun and we, we may do a seven aside tournament. And we, we, I think we haven't got a bad staff team there now. If we add in um, the, the one or two centre forwards we've had in this year, giving us a hand in Jason Bourne and Gary O'Neill. And we have Stephen Marr and myself, John. We'll see if Gerald will get in goal. But there's not a bad seven aside team there. So we'll see if we can give it a run for the money on, uh, <laughs> on Wednesday evening. But no, seriously, after that, then, I mean, the work will already begin because. 
we look at doing two sessions a week up to Christmas from the week after next. Uh, we look to introduce one or two new players to a group so they can connect with the existing players and group that's there. We're probably looking at a, a session on the training pitch and another one in the, in the gym or in a in the heat chamber along them extent. So it just keeps them ticking over. It's it's twice a week and I think it stands to you if you get a little bit of work done because you can't totally switch off and then get back to it in January. So it's important that we try and get the group together to do their bits together. And then when we can really kick on is when I suppose pre-season will officially start in, in January. I mean, I've already penciled in three pre-season games. I'll have more to to get in. And, and there's lots of work to do with the players that we've targeted now to, to go and get these players. And, and that's going to be be important for us so um now roll on all the hard work and, and, and roll on next season because they're exciting times all right thanks very much for coming on no problem at all james great talking to you